Why is a Fidelity Contra Fund losing billions of assets? Billions, my friends. This is interesting. Big fan of uh, Will Danoff over at the Contra Fund. I think he also runs the Fidelity Advisor New Insights as well, if memory serves. But uh, let's read this article. I was, uh, was kind of surprised by this, actually. A Dateline 9-23-2020 Advisor Perspectives by Eric Schatzker. Is actually, this might be on Bloomberg. Let's just see if it's a Bloomberg article. Yeah, Bloomberg. All right. Uh, so uh, Will Danoff has been wondering why billions of dollars keep flowing out of the Contra Fund. Performance isn't a problem. He's up 21% this year, trouncing the S&P's 6.2% return. His conclusion? Today's kids, they want something sexier. There's a demographic issue, says Danoff, who has beaten the benchmark by an average of 3% points annually over three decades. We need to appeal to Gen Zers and the, gen and the younger generation as well. And luckily, I think our app is quite good. But, you know, a typical Gen Zer may not be as interested in owning a mutual fund. That assessment for one of Fidelity's biggest stars captures the angst of an entire industry. For years, traditional mutual funds have been losing favor. Many investors were turned off by the chronically poor performance, and others objected to paying commissions and fees that approach 1%. Yep. There you go, buddy. All right, here's Pablo. Follow the like button. Follow the like button. There's now less money in actively managed U.S. equity funds than in low-cost alternatives such as index funds and exchange-traded funds. More recently, young investors have flocked to Robinhood markets, market com making commission-free trades with a few taps on their smartphones. Next to the social media antics of uh, celebrity speculator Dave Portnoy. Isn't he the guy? Who, Dave, isn't the guy who does Barstool Sports? Oh, let me look him up. Dave Portnoy does uh, Barstool Sports. I don't, is he a, uh, I don't get it. Is he a, uh, like, an investor guy? Uh, that's odd to me. Anyway, whatever. I guess he has a following. Uh, next to social media antics of Dave Portnoy, Danoff's world of buy and hold discipline seems antique by comparison. Man, we've heard that so many times. <laughs> so many times. Buy and hold is still the only way to go. When I started in 1990, there were 261 equity funds, and now there are thousands. There are thousands of hedge funds. There are thousands and millions of Robinhood investors. There's sovereign wealth funds, so there's no questions become much more competitive. Closely held fidelity, the Johnson family, remains one of the titans of asset management, running some $3.3 trillion. And unlike most competitors, it has embraced ETFs, runs a discount brokerage, and even developed uh, expertise in crypto. Danoff says access to Fidelity's vast resources is one of the reasons he's able to outperform the S&P for so long. I don't buy that for two seconds. There's always, on any kind of bell curve, you're always going to have outliers. Yet he also recognizes the appeal of index products whose growth in the 2010s eroded the economics of mutual funds and bookended the era when managers such as Peter Lynch, Bill Miller, and Keb Hebner were household names. Last, last year, 71% of large cap managers failed to beat the benchmark, according to S&P Global, which also creates the benchmark. Uh, one issue with investing in any actively managed fund is what happens when the fund manager retires or what happens if the fund manager loses his fastball. Do I still trust my manager? Says Dan, I was only 60. Oh, man, I thought it was older than that. Uh, managers do make mistakes. In Danoff's case, he unloaded most of the Contra Fund's position in Tesla, uh, missing out on more than $10 billion of gains. And now he's stuck in limbo, confident that the EV uh, have uh, electric vehicles have a bright future and that uh, Tesla is a great company, but he's apprehensive about buying into a capital-intensive business, not to mention the stock's $411 billion valuation. At the same time, Danoff is stuck with Berkshire Hathaway, even though its returns have lagged the uh, S&P 500 over the last decade. The more time I spent with Warren and, you know, attending annual meetings in Omaha, the more I like it. With all my tech holdings, this is a very good counterbalance and some blast for the big fund. Size is also something he has to wrestle with, uh, especially $130 billion in the Contra Fund. As a manager who focuses on earnings growth, he built some of the top holdings in Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and Alphabet, companies so powerful it would be a target for antitrust regulators. He does worry about that. Now the commie panic has been a boon to his portfolio, validating his long-term bets on software, social media, cloud committee, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but now uh, the, the Times also forced him to recognize the, the role corporate America plays in issues such as Systemic racism, economic insecurity, and climate change.
<laughs> Speaking up for civil rights or equal rights attracts a better caliber employee. I just, I can't take it. These guys are freaking maroons. All right, so let's hit, re, uh, leave it. Let's see who the comments are and let's see if there's any comments. Uh, or maybe people realize they can buy the comparable Vanguard growth fund for a fraction of the price. It's hardly beaten, handily beaten contra fund over every period over the, over the last 10 years. Okay. I don't know about that. All right. So I, I, that's, there you go. The Vanguard comparable Vanguard growth fund is beaten contra fund in every, every comparable category. We shall see. I, I don't know. But anyway, so it's interesting. You know, at the end of the day, um, you get too big of an asset base. It's awful hard to beat the markets. It just really is. Uh, you got to shut the company down. I mean, not shut it down, like close it up, but you got to stop it for new investors. Vanguard does that. Vanguard Prime Cap, uh, Vanguard Capital Opportunity, Vanguard Healthcare Fund. They always do that when the funds get too big because it's just they can't move a mountain if they become mountainous, if that makes sense. And uh, that inherently makes sense. I bet Fidelity does not do that. I mean, the reason is because Fidelity. You know, the Johnson family is there to make money for the Johnson family. All right, interesting. We'll put a link in the show notes. See ya.